tonight, though, with looking at how to study the Bible in context. First of all, we have the issue of eisegesis versus exegesis. Eisegesis versus exegesis. Eisegesis is saying, basically, what does the passage mean to me? How do I feel about this passage? Versus exegesis, which is really going to the uh, real context of the Bible. And we'll look at that tonight, how you do that. And by the way, this is something all of us can do as lay people, okay? All of us can do this as lay people. Today, it's easier than ever with technology. So many online Bible commentaries, uh, the Strong's Concordance allows you to look up the original meaning of a specific word, whether we're talking the Greek, the Hebrew, Aramaic, most of it, of course, being in Greek or Hebrew. And you can look up the original meaning. You know, sometimes these words don't translate real well in the English language. But we have been blessed with the tools that allow us to take a Bible verse and to break it down in the original. Now, I I can't read Greek, but I can certainly go to a Greek concordance and I can see what that verse means. I just put it into a computer, it pops up, and then starts to break it down for me in the original, which allows me to get a real good understanding of what the verse means, particularly when certain English words don't translate well. And that is called... Uh, exegesis, getting to the real meaning of a Bible verse through context. You know, in real estate, it's what? Location, 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 right? Well, in the study of the Bible, it's context, context, context. Tonight, we'll look at a few key tools for how to study the Bible in context. Again, this is something we all should be doing. You know, we read that the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians because they examined the scriptures daily to see if what Paul said was true. Here were the the, the Bereans checking out the apostle Paul to see if what he was saying was true. You see, this is something we should all be able to do as lay people. You know, I do not believe the Bible teaches that we have to have one person that tells us the saith the Lord. Now, we need people to tell us, thus saith the Lord. We need prophets, people that speak forth truth. We need that. We have people that have the spiritual gift of, of prophecy, meaning they, they, God has given them the special spiritual discernment and spiritual gift of understanding the times, looking at the Bible, and then giving a prophetic warning. That's what I would call the gift of prophecy. Some may define that differently depending on uh, you know, their theology. But I believe the gift of prophecy accurately today is not one who, who predicts the future, but one who speaks forth truth. And again, that's a spiritual gift that someone has to understand the times, to look around and understand what's happening, and then say, now what does the Bible say about this? Does the Bible give us any indication as to how we're to think or respond to this? And then they speak forth a prophetic word saying, thus saith the Lord, giving a warning. We've had many such prophets in America, if you will. Uh, f- the late Francis Schaeffer. The late Francis Schaeffer was writing books about uh, whatever happened to the human race and so many other great books warning back in the 60s and particularly in the 70s, the 70s and the 80s. That's when he really became popular in the 70s and 80s, warning about abortion and warning about what would come next, active euthanasia, and warning about all of these things that were coming within the culture and the culture war. And he went to the Bible and he gave a warning. We have many that have done that throughout, well, modern Christianity. Again, that's a special ability to look at the Bible and study it. So we have lay people, some of them who are pastors, some who are not. Many of them are lay people who just have that spiritual gift. You have a spiritual gift. I hope tonight you know what your spiritual gift is. If you're a Christian and dwelt by the Holy Spirit, you've got at least one. Maybe it's the gift of helps, mercy. Maybe it's the gift of of, uh, being a servant. Maybe it's the gift of administration. Maybe it's the gift of Bible teaching. Uh, But reality is, we all, regardless of our spiritual gift, we're all to be able to study the Bible in context. That's what the Bible commends. That's why it commends the Bereans. Because as lay people, they were examining the scripture to see if what even the Apostle Paul was teaching. So, lest you think, oh, this is the job of a pastor or an evangelist or someone that is Christian programming. No, this is the job of all who claim to be a Christian. In fact, the Bible says this is one of the hallmarks of a Christian, that they love the Bible, they want to know the Bible, they want to study the Bible, 
and they want to grow in spiritual maturity.